I feel like we should have a little applause. Yay, Yay Mickey. Hallelujah, <laughs> Christ is risen. He is risen Hallelujah. Welcome to worship at Flossmoor Community Church. And whether you're with us in person or you're those greeting us from home, we, are, we hope that you feel like this is a place where you belong. I am Betsy Hanselin, Executive Director of Church Ministry, and Reverend Travis Adams and I will be leading worship today. But I want you to know, Pastor Julie is alive and well. We just wanted to give her a break this morning so she can just sit after all that happened over Holy Week. It was a lot. So, but we want to uh, also recognize that we're joined by our guest musician, Jack Cassidy, today. You've heard, <laughs> yay, Jack. You just heard Nikki, and she and Ava and Brooke will be leading us in song this morning, so. Please stand, if you are able, and join Bryn in our call to worship. A new day has begun. Hope wins. A fresh start is granted. Today, you have the opportunity to do something new. Hope wins. Christ is entering your life in a new way. Faith wins. Come, let us worship God, who is inviting us into life in a new way, a way that transcends death, a way of hope and faith. Love wins. Let us worship Christ, who overcame death, to give us new life.
please be seated. Before we begin our brief time of prayer reflection, I'm just going to invite us to take a deep breath, inspire in, center yourself. Lord, we celebrate that you go before us in resurrection, but we often don't know what that looks like or means for us. Thank you, God, for going before us. We know that even when we are not sure of what we should do, that you are with us. And if we listen, really listen, deep down inside ourselves, we will hear your answer. Help us to not panic when you seem silent, to not be afraid when we seem to be alone, not to run when you are nowhere in sight. Lord, help us to wait and fill us with the knowledge that your spirit will lead us in kindness and love. You always do. You always do. Amen. Please remain in your seat and join in singing Come Holy Ghost, which you can find in the bulletin insert.
We pray for those whose lives are at critical crossroads, where decisions of ways forward are clouded by conflicting demands, where courage is required through uncertain times. We pray for those at the turning points of life, where changes in relationships, changes in family, changes in schooling, changes in employment, changes in health, changes in capabilities, changes in faith, cause chaos and bring uncertainty. We pray for these crises, for the patient wisdom to be exercised, and fear for change tempered by trust in your promised presence, whatever we face. We thank you, God, for the gift of your spirit, which binds our brokenness, brings us courage, and helps us face all we might otherwise fear. We pray for those whose lives feel as they are on hold, the future fearful, the present tearful, as if boundaries have closed in, options closed off, and what to do and to be is now unclear. We pray for the church that it can be a haven of calm, a source of healing, a place of space and time where truth can be discerned, trust shown, and confidence grown for life in faith with love. And we repeat the hopes of our heart as we repeat the words of hope you've given us so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Children, will you join me up front? It's me today. Come, children. <laughs> now is the time. <laughs> Wonderful. So got a few coming. So many. Many of you just got done with spring break and a lot of Easter things. Did you do anything exciting? No. <laughs> what did you say? Did you do something exciting? Yes. Um, I went to my cousin's, yeah, my cousin's uh, birthday party at a roller rink, and I learned how to skate really good. Roller rink, learning to skate, fantastic. Yes. You went to Florida? I've heard that's amazing. Yes. Also went to Florida? We're all going to Florida. Yes. Had a sleepover for your birthday? That's amazing. Isn't it great to have exciting things in our lives? But now, Easter's done, spring break's done. Do you have something exciting that's going to happen in the future? Yes. The solar, the solar eclipse, that's dope. Yes. Inflatable day? That sounds amazing. Yes. Birthdays are happening. Yes. The end of school. All these are beautiful things that bring my heart joy. You know, let's just sit together for a moment in silence and wait for those things. Ready? Is, is it fun waiting? No. Waiting? I mean, somebody's like, yes, I love waiting and sitting in silence with all my favorite people. But yeah, generally speaking, it's kind of hard to wait on the next exciting thing, isn't it? We get on these moments in these seasons where we have times where things are really cool and things are really popping off and things are really exciting and fun. And then there's times where we're like, we're waiting and we're waiting and we're waiting. And that's often how things are also in our faith, in which we know that there are some really great things that we have experienced thanks to the gifts of God and thanks to the promises of Jesus. And we know that in the future, more things, even better things than we've ever had um, is going to be coming. But sometimes it's very hard to wait in between. But luckily, we have a wonderful group of individuals here that are willing to wait for the great things with us. But you don't have to wait to go with Miss Amy now. Isn't that exciting? 
Great. And just a quick reminder, um, if you're third grade or below, you're going to go with Miss Amy. If you're a fourth or a fifth grader, we're hanging out here because we're doing communion together as a family. Does that feel good? Yay! Great. So let's do the words. Are you ready for the words? Let's stand up and do the blessing. Here we go. You got to say it loud because there's a lot of people here today. Are you ready? With the love that God freely gives us. We love you. Let the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Wonderful, wonderful. And as the children find their place in the world, we invite you to stand up and enjoy the passing of the peace. Okay, we're back, we're back. I feel like we should like have the Jeopardy uh, final answer music play right at the end of Passing with the Peace so we all, get, we all get back to our seats. It's fun to watch, certain people are very like territorial, like I'll say peace here, you can come say peace to me and then there's other people that like take off like a rocket to try and get as far as they can. I think that'd be a good game some Sunday, Julie, maybe we should just be like, see how far you can go during Passing of the Peace. But it's wonderful to be here with you this morning, and I pray that you've recovered from spring break and family trips and Holy Week. At FCC, we had a robust week of worship. We waved palms and sang with the kids. We gathered around tables and shared simple meals lovingly prepared by volunteers. We opened our doors to the Emmaus community for a Good Friday service where powerful music and inspiring scripture and deep words were shared with one another. And almost 300 folks gathered here last Sunday to celebrate the resurrection. And our musicians certainly blew the roof off. And we ended with many voices singing together the Hallelujah Chorus. Can we just stop for a moment and praise God for all that happened? <laughs> many, many hands went into creating the week. And I just marvel what we can do as a people when we gather together. Next Saturday is a busy time in the life of our church, and you can find about all the things happening in our family life insert. But next Saturday, we have a spring cleanup for if you can come and help clean up. 
for spring outside. Let pray for good weather. It'll be great. And that's from 9 to 11. And we're also having a membership class from 10 to noon here in the building. And if you're interested in attending, if you've been thinking about, like, is this the right place for me? Am I about ready to take a step forward? Or maybe not. Or I just have questions. Come on to the membership class. But just if you help, if you can, let us know so we can prepare for you. If you are a visitor today and have not already done so, I encourage you to fill out one of the Connect cards found in the back of the pews and turn it in to the um, check-in desk or in the offering box. This allows us to know who you are and maybe do just a little brief reach out after your visit. This week, a special e-blast was sent out regarding Pastor Dawn, and I hope that you've had the chance to read it and to hear her words to the congregation. She shared with us that in recent months, she has struggled with her physical and mental health and is now taking steps to care for herself. She started a leave from work at FCC and has entered a treatment program to attend to all things that are going on with her. We so appreciate Dawn's openness and honesty and of course the excellent work she has done with us. But especially as we as a community strive to destigmatize mental health issues, we are grateful that she has been honest with us about what's going on with her. And she ended her message with these words. Thank you, FCC, for your love, prayers, and support. I'm honored to shepherd you through, this, through your tough season, seasons and honored that God has equipped me with the courage to speak this truth and wisdom to get what I need in this difficult season. Pray with me and believe. The stories and experiences that we share with one another are part of our offerings of ourselves for the building of this community, just as our tithes and offerings are part of our commitment to one another and the work of this congregation. Please note we are still collecting funds for our special Easter offering, which is being directed towards RIP Medical Debt and Palestine Children's Relief Fund. And your Easter gift and all of your monetary gifts can be made either online or in the offering boxes as you leave worship today. Please join me in our offering prayer as we dedicate our gifts of time, talent, and treasure. God of abundance, receive these gifts of our hearts and lives and use them to build the biggest table imaginable that all might be fed and live together in peace. Amen. Our reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Listen now to these words, a story within God's grand story in which each of us belongs. Theophilus, the first scroll I wrote concerned everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning, right up to the day when he was taken up into heaven. Before he was taken up, working in the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus instru instructed the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed them that he was alive with many convincing proofs. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days, speaking to them about God's kingdom. While they were eating together, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father had promised. He said, this is what you heard from me. John baptized with water, but, only, but in only a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel now? Jesus replied, it isn't for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be with my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. After Jesus said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going away, and as they were staring toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood next to them. They said, Galileans, why are you standing here looking toward heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they entered the city, they went to the upstairs room where they were staying. Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, Alphaeus' son, Simon the Zealot, and Judas, James' son. 
all reunited in their devotion to prayer, along with some women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please take a moment for silent reflection. I don't know if you're sitting by a window that's open, but I am, and I can hear the rain. It's a nice, nice... It'll get everything ready for our spring cleanup next week. Always pubbing something. Anyways, last week was something, wasn't it? Easter Sunday and all its gloriousness, organs and bells, brass and strings, voices, plants, packed sanctuary. We celebrated the resurrection of Christ in every way imaginable. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. And last Sunday was also the end of our time in the Gospel of Mark. And I wonder if you remember what Mark's last words were. Here's your reminder. Mark chapter 16 ends with verse 8. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of Mark leaves us with a small group of faithful women who run out of the empty tomb with a mixture of awe and fright. Last week, Pastor Julie described this as the cliffhanger ending. We're left longing for closure that resolves the tension of this moment, but we must wait. Today's reading in Acts 1 is part of the answer to that cliffhanger. We begin our journey in the Acts of the Apostles that will continue over the coming weeks, and the author begins addressing Theophilus And immediately, or maybe not immediately, but maybe sometime, we remember that Luke's gospel was also addressed to Theophilus, or the one who loved God. So we can view Acts as a continuation of Luke's gospel. And the first paragraph gives a rundown of what has happened since the resurrection. Jesus reappeared, showed his followers that he was alive through many convincing proofs. I like that phrase. Hung out for 40 days. And he continued talking about the kingdom of God. There are a few things that indicate that life in post-resurrection time would be different for his followers. First of all, we notice that they're no longer called disciples, but apostles. We learn later that it's the same 11 who have been with Jesus, minus Judas, and the women who surrounded them. But they have a new title, and it's Apostle. Disciples are students or followers of a master. And they were those that who Jesus taught and called to journey with him to serve and bring truth to others. But the Greek root of apostle means one who is sent. So they're no longer the students, but now the, they are those who are called to, send, to be sent out to preach and teach and heal and serve. They are now the messengers, the emissaries, the ambassadors. And I wonder how they felt about this change in job title. Were they excited? Were they afraid? Were they discomforted? Jesus is trying to prepare them for the tasks ahead where they would be sent out. But verse 4 tells us he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. It's like he says, you're going, but not yet. He gives them the heads up that they will be getting a new baptism in the Holy Spirit in the next few days. And again, I wonder, how did that feel? They they had seen, they had witnessed baptism with water, but baptism with the Holy Spirit has to be a whole new thing. That's a lot. And perhaps the newly appointed apostles try to change the subject, because this all seems pretty heavy and confusing, and they ask Jesus a question. Is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And God bless them. But seriously, this is your question? I imagine that Jesus literally clutched his forehead like this. I know I would. Because in that question, again, the former disciples proved that they do not understand his messiahship. 
They are looking for that military regional power that will take back the beloved city. Jesus bringing the victory, bringing back the glory days of Jerusalem. I almost imagine them with little make Jerusalem great again hats on their heads. And this is why Jesus is the king that we all need, because he doesn't get nasty with them. He doesn't remind them that they get it wrong again, that they still don't get it. Jesus the Christ doesn't clutch his forehead or roll his eyes or say bad words like I probably would. In my head, when I think of the story, I hear a serenely calm voice reply, don't worry about God's timing or power. It's covered. And remember when I mentioned that baptism in the Holy Spirit? It's going to happen. It's going to be cool. And then you will receive God's power, and you will understand that you are going to be my witnesses. And when I say witnesses, I mean, it'll happen in Jerusalem, yes, but in Judea and Samaria and actually just everywhere to the ends of the earth. Jesus is trying to tell them they're worried about the wrong things. Don't, don't ask when or how, and don't just focus on Jerusalem. The scope of this is much bigger and includes everyone even the Gentiles. You will be my witnesses. You guys saw incredible things when you were with me, and others did not. Be their eyes. Tell the stories. Do the work that I did. But for now, just, just wait. Just wait, and you'll know. Just wait, you'll understand. Just wait. And the Holy Spirit will fill you, empower you. That's another indication for them that things are different in post-resurrection time. No longer disciples, but apostles. No living in a Jerusalem-centered life, but a global life to the ends of the earth. Just wait for it. They didn't get too long to process this before Jesus is lifted up. And there's a whole sermon you can do on, on that act. But for us right now, they're standing there watching this, and their friend and rabbi Jesus was killed and returned to them for 40 days, and now up he goes. And you know the question that I'm asking. What do they think and feel in this moment? Maybe a first reaction was awe. This is a supernatural act after all. They didn't get to witness his actual resurrection, but they can see this, rising up and out of sight with God on a cloud. And maybe the second reaction is, are you kidding me? Or maybe, oh crap, maybe they're clutching their foreheads now. We just got him back, and now he seems to be really gone, and we're left alone, and there's some sort of Holy Spirit thing, baptism coming, and we're going to have to spread out. <laughs> It's probably both awe and fear, despondency and a sense of responsibility. The charismatic leader is gone, and now it's on us. And we certainly aren't charismatic, or a leader, or a healer, or, or a teacher. And the white-robed guys show up and tell them to quit staring and get moving. The verses today end with their movement from Mount of Olives back to Jerusalem and a regrouping in the upper room. It's a familiar place. We get the list of who was present, the 11 and some women, his mom, his family. It's a small group, but it's a devoted group that was with Jesus the last three years. And they regrouped in the upper room to wait, just as instructed. The Acts of the Apostles tell the story of a small group of con who continued spreading the gospel, the witnesses who shared the story, the apostles who acted in places of Jesus, those who carried on. And the first chapter contains instructions for the early church. Could this be instructions for us as we wait? Wait on the Holy Spirit. As Travis mentioned, we love waiting, don't we? I mean, Advent's a time of waiting, and now we have this, we're waiting again. Wait on the Holy Spirit. But can we see this as a blessing for us? We don't always have to know the right thing to do right now. Wait on the Holy Spirit. 
The Spirit will move and tell us what to do and say and how to be in community with one another. Wait on the Holy Spirit. Start where you are. And they do wait. In our church calendar, we hear the end of this wait in six weeks. Come back on May 19th, which is actually my last Sunday on staff, when I'll be preaching part two of this sermon on Pentecost, when we get to hear the story of the Holy Spirit Spirit showing up and filling them all. Jesus tells us to wait, and the ascension appearance angels remind us to quit standing there waiting for someone else to do the work. Jesus is gone, folks. We can't get stuck waiting for a hero to show up. It's up to us now. So we're called to wait and then act. Wait and then act. What does that look like for you? When have you waited for the movement of the Holy Spirit? How does Flossmore Community Church make space for waiting? How are we called to act when led by the Spirit? It's an exciting time for our church. Like the women at the tomb and the apostles looking up in the sky, we have terror and amazement about what lies ahead. Deep down, we know we need to be open to the Holy Spirit's leanings to go in new directions because many of our old patterns don't work anymore. We don't have the number of members or the money or a clear, uncluttered community calendar like we used to. We've wrestled with years of deficits and have finally challenged ourselves to find a new way of doing things in community. And being a lay-led church means that we are all a part of the waiting and the acting. And boy, that's amazing and terrifying. It means that realigning ourselves with the whispers of the Holy Spirit is not Pastor Julie's responsibility. It's ours. She will guide us, of course, but it is our discernment, our ideas, our sacrifices, our imagination that will move us in the direction that the Holy Spirit calls us to. And we've gathered a working group who is listening, listening to you. So we thank those of you who submitted your have you considered or what if thoughts in the recent survey. And I anticipate there will be upcoming gatherings soon for the congregation where we can share ideas and perhaps ask curious questions together. And today, a small group of folks led by our lay ministry board is gathering after worship to listen to one another and discern who we can invite into serving on our boards and committees in the coming year. Perhaps you have been listening to the Holy Spirit's whispers. Perhaps you are shifting internally towards leading. If that's the case, let me know. Wait and then act. Whatever season you are in, the season of waiting or the season of acting, you are a beloved part of the beautiful tapestry of this congregation. There is space for us all. And in the end, we are reminded that they gathered in the upper room. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer. So in our season of waiting, let us each devote ourselves to prayer. Let us each devote ourselves to praying for the nudges of the Holy Spirit to lead people into leadership. Let us pray for our working group who are discerning how to address our deficit and position FCC's future in healthy and spirit-led directions. And let us devote ourselves to praying for one another in whatever season we find ourselves in. Amen. Let the song prepare your heart for communion and please sing along if you know it.
As we prepare our hearts and minds together at this table, please know that this is an open table available to all. No matter your tradition or background, your age or experience, or the size and strength of your faith, you are welcome here. We gather to remember the love that Jesus poured out on all of us and the events of the upper room where he gathered with his disciples before he was taken away. Ushers will invite you to come down the center aisle where you can receive communion from one of our elder teams and return by the side aisles. There is gluten-free option and a cup available at our table in the front as well. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and right it is, and our joyful duty, to give thanks to you at all times and in all places. O Lord, our Creator, almighty and everlasting God, you created the heaven with all of its hosts and the earth with all of its plenty. You have given us life and being and preserve us by your providence. But you have shown us the fullness of your love in sending into your world your Son, Jesus Christ, the eternal Word, made flesh for all men for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Most righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the world. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Together we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break may be with us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that, being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of faith and grow up in all things into him, Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, and these grapes from many hills into one cup, grant, O Lord, that thy whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into his kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And the Lord Jesus. The same night he was betrayed, took the bread, and we had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, take and eat. This is my body, broken to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also, he took the cup they drank, and he raised it, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament, and in my blood. Drink this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I now invite those that will be assisting us to please step forward. We may just wait a few moments to, before we start because the children aren't back. So I think they're coming now. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah.
to Jesus. promises the spirit came we go now as witnesses for god to tell Jesus' story through our words and actions emboldened by the spirit let us go out into our community to love and serve amen, amen. please join us as we share some and there we go <laughs> okay amen right.